quite frankly, there are those who, um, for instance, one of our callers uh, has said that he, uh, he discerns a political uh, motive to uh, this particular uh, uh, protest action, um, you know, rally, that now we have a lot of issues on ground and uh, in the midst of all the complications, if uh, NLC is throwing its weight behind um, ASU, um, it, it, it will only complicate the matter. First of all, react to that whole matter about a suspicion of uh, uh, any political aspect to, to, to this uh, rally that has been called. Simple. Maybe it's first to define or let's try to understand what is politics. Politics, in its real definition, is about how a state is governed, how you allocate resources, how you take decisions, and how you are able to address issues. That is the definition of politics. So possibly the person may not have understand the import of saying that it's politics. Is it also politics to keep our children, the children of the poor and the working class, five months out of classroom? Is it also politics to delay the negotiation process? Is it also politics not to act proactively? Those are the issues. So I think we should be able to distill, yes, we are in political season. And people are free uh, to try to act and behave in a way and manner that will not address the issue. I agree with him, yeah, he's a political citizen. And attention has been diverted to the issue of politics, leaving the substantive issues. But I assure you that this is a very key and germane issue. And we think that it should be given all the desired attention. In fact, everything should be brought to a halt until we are able to uh, solve this issue. So I want to assure you that possibly he spoke from the point of lack of understanding is even what is the definition of politics. Okay. And what is the politics of it? Yeah. Mm. It's, uh, politics is about politics also for uh, uh, those concerned to take decisions. If they don't take decisions, you don't also expect citizens to fold their arms. We are a pan-Nigerian organization. And from time immemorial, we have acted in the best national interest. The... That is one credential that the Nigerian Labour Congress have had, and I think this is one of them. The uh, ASU, ASU has been unsuccessful uh, trying to mediate on the matter, uh, and as you said, uh, with, with many people as intermediaries, ASU themselves have tried, and um, it seems that they're not getting joy uh, from government. You're well aware of all those efforts uh, ASU, ASU has tried uh, since the, you know, uh, back in February. Uh, now, I don't know how optimistic you are because this looks like a, a mass action to force a, a resolution which is sorely needed. How optimistic are you given that a government has not been able to come across, the authorities have not been able to come across, meet ASU at a place where, you know, they can say, fine, this is compromise. Uh, it looks like whatever it is ASU has been offered, if anything at all, it just isn't worth it to take it. So how optimistic are you that that same center of authority will do things differently this time? Yes, first let me try to explain. It's not only ASU. The four university-based unions have all withdrawn their services. Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, Academic Staff Union of Nigerian Universities, National Association of Academic Technologies and Non-Academic Staff Union. And all of them bothered on one issue, the review of the 2009 agreement and the fund of our Nigerian universities. And let me try to break it down into pieces so that you can understand. The fund of Nigerian universities has its roots from the need assessment report of government. It's not the unions. Need assessment report was carried out under the chairmanship of Professor Mahmoud Yaqub. That report had been accepted by the National Executive Council and is also approved for implementation since 2011. And if you look at that report, picture at the back of that report, you can see students taking lectures from the window instead of being inside the hall because the hall is filled up. It's about bringing our universities to the level we are learning and teaching facilities will be available, and we can compete favorably with uh, 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 contemporaries of Nigerian universities around the world. So basically, it's very patriotic, and we should be able to look at that. The second aspect is about the payment platform, which is in dispute 
since the deployment of IPs, even in the core civil service, I can tell you that I've received several reports. And proactively, we wrote to government, can you have a social dialogue where this issue can be resolved? Before it, it even degenerated to this level, we wrote. So it's one of the issues and many other issues. But importantly also is the review of the 2009 agreement. I can tell you that from 2009 agreement to date, those workers have been on fixed salary. And that is why a professor in Nigeria, even if you have seven, eight PhDs, will not be earning up to $700. $700, I said. Because no Nigerian professor or worker in the university is earning 500,000 naira. We have in other climes, even within Nigeria, in other establishments, where a driver can earn actually 500,000. And they are earning. I can give you a lot of examples. So, basically because of that, there have been a lot of brain drain. Yes, I also been a lack of job satisfaction. Workers end to earn a living. Everybody work to earn a living, to be able to have a family, to take care of his family. That's why people work to earn a living. But you also know that with the challenges in our economy, with the exchange rate of 700, uh, 607 uh, naira to the dollar today, basically if, uh, if you are within the category of those workers, you know that it's really valid. And that agreement of 2009 have expired, and therefore it needs to be renegotiated. They are not fixated, uh, saying that you must give us this. No, they are ready to negotiate. And from the assurance I've received from all of the unions, they are ready even within 48 hours for those issues to be sorted out. In the past five months, it has been moving from Ministry of Education to Labor, Labor to Education, and the issues have remained unresolved. And you remember that in April, we had to scale it up to the level of the president where we wrote and pleaded that can we have a high-powered panel to look at this issue and resolve it once and for all? Why do we say so? In the past, it has happened. I remember I was part of the panel in 2011 when this issue also degenerated to the level where it is. We wrote to President Jonathan and he agreed. In fact, he hosted the meeting. 14 hours, no break. Everything was resolved. Every fact was put on the table. Every minister was there. Everybody that had to do with the decision process was there and the issue was resolved. That's how that 2009 agreement was signed, implemented, and then we had some relative. So that agreement of 2009, under the Labour Palace, a collective bargaining agreement have a timeline time because of a lot of factors that will affect it. It has expired. In fact, in many sectors, including the private sector, collective bargaining agreements reviewed after every two years or three years. In this case, let's say even five years. Yeah. So validly, that collective bargaining agreement have expired. Okay. And women um, on it uh, have set up. Three committees. Okay. Land. Com com three Comrade committees. Waba, uh, we've Remember got to... the Babalakin Committee. Yes. <laughs>